Thank you, Dan, and good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. I heard like four or five people. It's a great day at Lincoln <laughs> University. Good morning. Good morning. I am definitely excited to be here. Before I begin, I want to first uh, say, you know, thank you to uh, Mike Jones and Coach Johnson, who stepped in in the interim to uh, who, who really did a great job for our program. We want to acknowledge that they did leading up to this point. You know, it, 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 it's always interesting when you have a transition, and we're at a transitional phase in our athletic program and in our football program. And one thing that we're committed to is excellence in everything that we do, in the classroom and outside of the classroom. And that means winning. We know we've had some challenging, lean years the past few years, but that's going to turn around now. We're excited. We know our students are excited. Our student athletes are excited. And you're going to see some exciting football at Lincoln University based on the new coach that will be introduced today. We had probably 80 applicants for this job. So we knew there was a lot of interest in the job. But after all of the going through the applications and screening, we feel that we found the right person for Lincoln University at this particular time to need, lead us to the next level. And our athletic director, Jen Mosley, will come up, give some comments, and introduce the next head football coach of Lincoln University. Thank you. Well, good morning. Thanks again for uh, everyone taking your time to come out this morning. Uh, this is a great day. Uh, I can tell you as the uh, athletic director, this has been a total team effort. Uh, starting with Dr. Rome, Willie Jude, Joseph Watkins, Dr. Bickle, and the entire athletic department staff. Uh, this has been a process and, and, and your help was tremendous in getting us to this point. We had nearly 80 coaches or just over 80 coaches throughout the country at all levels of football apply for this position. Uh, it was a process going through uh, and, and trying to base uh, on resumes, phone calls, people sending you emails to get that number down. Uh, some of them were really tough to eliminate from the process. Um, we got that number down to five coaches who were granted phone interviews. Uh, and from those phone interviews, uh, we had two gentlemen come to our campus over the last week. Um, I, I've told everybody publicly I wanted to have this process done, hopefully by December 1st, but at the latest, December 15th. I wanted to make sure that our student athletes that were still here, uh, finishing up exams this week, knew who their leader would be before they went home for the break. And to know that this program is on solid footing when they return. I would like to thank our Student Government Association and our student body for their commitment to the improvement of athletics at Lincoln University through the recent student athletic fee. Because of that fee, I think our pool of candidates grew even larger and even better in quality because of what they see as the vision for Lincoln athletics. Today, we introduced Stephen A. Smith as the 22nd head coach of Lincoln University football. With a coaching career spanning over 18 years at the collegiate, professional, and high school levels, Coach Smith is prepared to develop our student athletes as players, but more importantly, as men. His 10-year collegiate career, the last four as the offensive coordinator at Albany State University, includes seven trips to conference championships, where he's won four of those conference championships. Coach Smith told us his plan to recruit quality people and players from areas that are home to many Lincoln alums, such as St. Louis, Kansas City, Memphis, Chicago, California, Miami, and states throughout the South. But he's also shown a commitment to building a fence right here in central Missouri. We spoke of the rich tradition at Jefferson City High School, nearby Helias, and the outstanding program at Blair Oaks as well as schools within the 30 mile radius of Lincoln University that are really, really good in football on an annual basis. And it's important for us to recruit each of those areas and Coach Smith has shown a commitment through the staff that he intends to bring with him to make sure that 
Lincoln's name is proudly displayed in each of those areas. I'm convinced that Lincoln football can compete for championships in the Great Lakes Valley Conference, and that Stephen Smith is the right guy to do that here at Lincoln. I'd like to welcome Coach Stephen Smith, the 22nd head coach at Lincoln University. Does anybody have any questions for Coach Smith? What are the biggest challenges of uh, turning a program around that's really had decades of not even having a winning season, let alone competing for uh, a lofty goal in that national championship? What are your priorities to try to turn things around? Well, the first thing is you have to teach success. You know, you can't get results if you don't put the work in. You know, I spoke with a few guys this morning, and I explained that to them. You know, it's all about how hard you work. Nobody gets a job by just sitting down. You didn't sit on the couch and wake up this morning and become a reporter. You know, what we have to do is we have to put the work in. And when you put the work in, you get the results that you want. The type of work you put in, the type of results you're going to get. You put hard work in, 
and you're gonna get good results. And that's what that's gonna be that's gonna be a big part of getting these guys to understand that hey, what you do in the classroom, what you do in the weight room, what you do on the football field, you know how you practice, what you do on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, uh, and how you finalize everything on Thursday. That's going to give you the results on Saturday. Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday is the most important days of a football week. That's making sure you go to study hall, making sure that you're attending class, you're doing everything you're supposed to do. All right, so you can get the results on Saturday. So that's going to be the first thing, is teaching them what success is. And then the second thing would be just teaching them how to be significant. You know, I talk about being significant, you know, because it's important to me. Significance means how to handle that success, how to live within the moment, and then once the moment is over, move on to the next moment. And that's what we have to do day to day. So if that answers your question, it's teaching them how to handle success and how to be successful. Um, coach, what was it that attracted you to come here late to become head coach? Uh, a few things. Um, I've talked to people about the program. I talked to, uh, before I even uh, looked at it, I talked to people about the program, and I heard about where they're trying to go. Uh, and I say trying now, but now we're talking about where we are going. Uh, so that's, that's the new statement, not trying to do anything. I would tell people you're trying and you're not working hard enough. So where we are going. Um, and it is attracting me because I, I felt like, you know, when you have uh, a president and AD and, a, you know, an athletic administration of the school in general who's putting the resources into getting it done, then, you know, that's, that's important. You know, I've been places where you had less and we did what we're supposed to do. I did places where we had more we did what we're supposed to do. So it's all about you focusing on the, the opportunity. And I believe that this administration, this community, wants a winner. And that's my job is to give them a winner. Coach, will you be bringing a lot of your own assistants in? And is there some local ties that you might have on your staff? Yes, uh, there will be some local ties on staff. And yes, I will bring in, bring in some assistants. Uh, a couple of assistants, I don't, don't want to you know, rock the boat yet, but I'll let you know that a couple of assistants Everybody I've brought in has had success, that I'll be bringing in has had success. Uh, and success in recruiting, as well as on the football field. As success, they've also had success in growing young men. Uh, they've been a part of championships. They know how to win. Uh, so, you know, winning just, winning is not just on the field. And that's where I think a lot of people get misconstrued uh, about winning. It's about how the young man carries himself when he walks into a restaurant. It's about how, that, how people perceive him on campus. You know, when I go recruit and I'm looking at a young man and uh, he's a big time recruit, what I'm looking at is when I walk down the hallways with him, how many teachers walk up to him and hug him and say, hey, that's my baby. Hey, that man, you, you're getting a good kid there. You're getting this. Compared to if he walks down the hallway, he's a big time player, no one speaks to him. Something's wrong with that. So, you know, the staff that we're bringing in understands that. Uh, they know what we're looking for. Um, so they're a part of uh, becoming a champion. They've been a champion before, so that, that's the great thing about it, that they know what we're, they, they know how to build a champion. They know about teaching success. Can you talk about the importance of, of recruiting locally? Yes. Uh, the big thing is we're going to blitz Missouri um, because it's important to have your own, you know, you fill up the stands with your student body and your community. So the more, peop the more players that we have from the community, the more players that we have from the state of Missouri, it's going to help revenue within the school. Uh, so that's important. So we're going to blitz. We want to blitz Missouri. Uh, we will have you know from from the major schools to Elias to Jefferson City to Burroughs, like uh, Coach Mobley said, we'll be on top of them. To all the surrounding, from Kansas City to St. Louis, you know, to Columbia, wherever there's opportunities, we're going to we're going to attack. So we're going to attack hard in Missouri, and then we're going to work to we're going to work outside Missouri once we make sure we attack Missouri. That's the key point. We got to attack Missouri first. Um, just. Becoming a head coach after serving as assistant, uh, I mean, what excites you about taking on this opportunity? I didn't get the first part. What excites you about taking this opportunity here at League of becoming head coach? Uh, it's a dream. You know, I've been only had two dreams. I tell people all the time, I only had two dreams in life when I started coaching. One was the coaching off in the NFL. I did that. The second was to become a head coach. And not just become a head coach, but win a national championship as a head coach. So that's important to me. It means something to me. It's a drive for me. You know. You know, I don't want to get real passionate about it because I can get a little passion when I talk. But I'm, 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 I'm going to stay a little calm. But just, just know it's, it's very, very important.
couple of questions. Will there be any holdovers from the current staff and also your age and your personal background where you, where you grew up, et cetera? Uh, as far as the holdovers from the personal staff, everybody, if, in, uh, if there's anybody here from the last staff, they will have an opportunity to speak with me. Um, that's how I feel that's important. Um, and we'll see as we move forward. Uh, my age, I'm 39. My personal background, I'm from Chicago, Illinois. Uh, grew up in Chicago, and let's just say I went through my trials and tribulations in Chicago and was able to get out of those trials and tribulations and achieve different things. Couch fan? Uh, yeah, because I actually worked, I was a chef for them for a little while. <laughs> on the little rooftop, so. So it's been a good fall for you. Yeah, good, real good. You know, I, I like White Sox too. I grew up as a White Sox fan, but ended up becoming a Cubs fan. So it was a good deal. Uh, different, it varied from different years. Uh, we talked about last year we wanted to average between 25 to 28 points a game. And reason being is, you know, how many points you average is not, let me say this, how many points you average is not the goal of what we're looking for. The goal that we're looking for was to keep defense off the field, uh, manage the game, being able to uh, use the time of possession, uh, not create turnovers, uh, give our defense a chance to rest and not keep them on the field, you know, for most of the game and give the other, give the opponent the time of possession. That's important. You know, when you talk about winning a game, you can win a game 13 to 12, you can win a game 50 to nothing. But the key is how you win the game. Did you do the components within the game that you to win? And, you know, turnovers, uh, penalties, all those different things, things that, that, that cause you to lose a game. Every penalty you have is 30% chance of losing a game. For every turnover you have, it's a 50% chance that you lose a game. So now what you're trying to do is you're trying to catch up. I don't want to play catch up football. What I want to do is I want to control the game, defensively and offensively, as well as with special teams. And that's important to us. Was that because of the personnel you had this year, or are you more of a, you know, this day of age, of attack and go, go, um, go, go, go? No, you know, I've had the player of the year for the last two years at running back. And he's averaged 1,000. Thousand plus yards the last two years. He's a walk-on kid. You know, I'll tell you this: my my craft and my dominance is up front. When you build a team, your offensive line has to be the best of the best. Your defensive line has to be the best of the best. So, for us, when you can depend on your offensive line, you can depend on your defensive line. You watch you watch some of these D1 schools and you watch some of these NFL teams and you watch the ones that are, that are winning. They're not winning because they they scoring all these points. They're winning because they're dominating up front. That's the key. If you don't dominate up front, it's not going to happen. So that's what it came down to. Uh, our quarterback was the number one passer in the conference because he was protected. You know, so I don't dictate the game. What I do is I control the game. And if our passing game is working, then we'll work our pass. If our run game is working, we'll work our run. But we're going to be dominant up front, and we're going to make sure that when we build our team, our team will be built inside out because we don't have O line and D line. They, they don't care what you do. Uh, with that, we're going to uh, wrap up the press conference. Members of the media are more than welcome to stick around if you have any further questions for Coach Smith. And uh, I believe members of the uh, Lincoln family will be able to meet him a little bit later as well. So, again, thank you very much for coming out today. You're very excited about this new chapter of Lincoln Athletics.